So I've got the resolution 1024 pixels by 576 pixels. No anti-aliasing uh, just yet. So there we go. This is what the ship looks like. Again, you know, it looks very pixelated because we haven't set any anti-aliasing or any motion blur just yet. And then just pull it all the way up here. And this is what the ship will look like once it's moved past the camera. That position doesn't look too bad. Uh, so now the next important thing you might want to do before you export your movie is make sure the camera is selected, go to camera settings, uh, so the properties and then here you can say okay I want to have a standard resolution so you've got the PAL NTSC uh, or one of the HD settings and then say you want to have a quick preview so you don't want to have exactly these resolutions so you just want to have 50% of that so it will take the half of that and half of this and uh, it, it just speeds up rendering altogether. And then what I normally would do is set enhanced high uh, for anti-aliasing, uh, anti extreme and enhanced extremes only if you've got really, really strong settings in uh, motion blur. But that can make rendering times ridiculously long. So uh, all, all I do is uh, high, enhanced high, that's uh, for best quality. And uh, you won't really notice a difference between these two anyway. And uh, you'll save more than half of rendering time if you, if you select one of these. Now again, just to do a quick preview of one of these settings, this can take really, really long as well. Even without motion blur, as, as you will see with the, a quick preview here, uh, it won't be as fast. So you can notice already it's taking much, much longer because the quality is higher and you will have less uh, pixelated uh, quality. In fact, this one should be completely without any pixels. Now uh, we've only set half of it, so you see it's already you know faster, but the, the quality looks way better. So now let's say we want to have exactly these resolutions here. So we'll set it back 200%, and now you'll see how long the rendering will actually take. Quite noticeable, but the end result you know will look uh, amazing, and it's actually worth it every time. Now, depending on what's in your scene and how complex the scene is, rendering time can be very, very long. It can go up to, you know, from several hours up to several days, even weeks. Uh, especially if you're using particles uh, but uh, even if you have just a, a few more objects in the scene and some more lights and maybe even a sun several stars uh, and high resolution textures uh, this can take really really long so a typical um, 8 second render for a stock Andromeda took me more than 24 hours to render and again if there was a lot happening in that uh, 3D scene it sometimes took 3 days and I think there was even one that took 1 week to render. So this one's nearly done and this is just to give you another good example of what this will actually look like once it's done in high res and then you'll see it's worth the w it's, it's really worth waiting for it. So there you go, a very nice high resolution render of our Starship flying past. So uh, now you can, if you're happy with the settings here, for, for, for me, or just to give you a quick preview, I'll just set it back to 50% just to get faster rendering times. And again, uh, although I'd leave it to this, just to give you an idea how it'll look like, I'm uh, to speed up rendering time again uh, for demonstration purposes, I'll just set this down to enhance low, which I would never choose uh, otherwise. Uh, motion blur, same thing. Uh, to get it really looking nicely, you, you can set it to motion blur, but that will uh, increase rendering times ridiculously as well. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave this off. Otherwise, I'd set it to cl classic and leave all the settings down here. So blur length 50% is, uh, is all right. Shutter efficiency 100%. That's all okay. Again, I'll just uh, turn it off. And uh, I think that's it. So that's the camera settings. Now, the next important part that we have to do uh, when we want to render this out is actually go to the render pane, select render globals. So that will be the render settings. Now you can ignore any of these settings here, that's just to override it, but once you set the camera, uh, it will bypass any of these settings here. Um, so again, we just make sure that we've set frame 1 to frame 200, that's what we want to go, but we've just changed it to 160, so in here we'll say again, only render to frame 160, please. Um, ray trace shadows to make you know the whole scene a bit more realistic, it will actually render out the shadows for you, so we'll We'll leave that in there. Lens flares, very, very important uh, if you've got lights. Uh, we've got blink lights here on the ship. Then you want to set it to realistic, otherwise you can do a wireframe, which will just show a 3D object and lines, how they could look like, and quick shade will add just a, a layer of uh, you know solid colors to give you a, a better, um, a quick preview, say it that way. But realistic is what you want to set it for if you want to have the final render. And then you can ignore any of these filters, except for the very important one, the output one. 
We want to click here, save animation, what codec, so I always use a quick time. Then where you want to save the file to, so I'll just say desktop, call it intrepid.mov. Save that, and then change the settings in the codec itself. So let's say uh, I'll take Apple ProRes uh, high resolution, 25 frames per second. We don't want it interlaced because it's not going to be on a DVD. It's not going to be shown on an old TV. It's going to be on the computer only or just the internet. Uh, 444 chroma keying filter. Yeah, that's good if you're doing, um, uh, you know, high. If you if you've actually got high resolution footage that you want to use, uh, that that's actually color space as well. So 444 is very high quality, but we're not going to use that. And uh, Especially if you've got green screen work that you're working for as well, uh, you know you can set this option. So just leave this as it is. Press the OK button, and then basically that's it. We've no we've now finished and set everything up that we want to for rendering. Uh, all you can do now is hit the F10 key or click on here. Now it, it will also warn you saying, well, you've still got the uh, the F9 preview active. Ac active. Uh, so when it renders uh, another frame for the video, it will refresh that all the time, which will slow down rendering time. So it's asking you, are you sure you really want to leave this on or shall we turn it off? So yeah, we'll turn off that display and then it will start rendering. So frame one to 160. Um, that'll be the resolution because like I said, I wanted to have half of it. That's uh, the anti-aliasing it will do to make it look a little bit better, although it's only a quick preview enhanced low and uh, basically that's it you also see motion blur type but again because we haven't set motion blur it, it's not demonstrated in here uh, now it's already rendered frame 4 so that will be somewhere down here for example and now you can see already was just a you know a low quality preview render how long this is already taking us it's only just done three percent so uh, I'll come back once this is nearly done Oh, the render just finished and uh, took about 20 minutes. Now it's a dual core laptop that I'm using, so do, you know if you're using a tower or a more modern computer, then uh, you know your render won't take that long. Even though this was just a quick preview setting, so you can see the higher the you know the settings, the you know extremely longer the render times will actually get. So uh, just navigate quickly to um, the render that we've done. So it should only be half the resolution, so it should be a small one. Yep, there we go. Uh, I'll just play it in full screen just to, uh, yeah, it should be good enough to show you what the render looks like. There you go, it's not too bad. Now you can see imperfections in here because of the low quality settings and that it's been blown up to a full screen with a, a lower res. So, you know, at this resolution, it doesn't look as bad. But again, you get the idea. And you can see here the blink light, but that's something that I just did as a setting to show you what uh, what you can do. Now, uh, all the other blink lights are a bit smaller, so the closer you get to the ship, the better you will see them. But um, again, you can change that uh, to whatever you uh, would like to have it. But uh, I normally try and make it as canon as possible uh, to the actual show. But uh, yeah, that's basically how Lightwave works. You know, just getting started, like I said, even if you've never used it before. Uh, you know, as simple as uh, loading up uh, an, an object, changing the texture values, and then loading up Lightwave, setting keyframes to position your object, and that's it. Just export your video, and the rest Lightwave will do for you. So uh, that's the magic of uh, animation software. So I hope you enjoyed this very small series of Lightwave. There will be some more Lightwave tutorials coming later on uh, how to add more um, complex scenes and um, more complex uh, objects like you know lasers and whatnot, or explosions and other tricks that I use to create my scenes. But uh, I hope this gave, gave you uh, a basic understanding and uh, hopefully even uh, made it possible for you to uh, you know use Lightwave if you have it laying around on your hard drive somewhere. 